The problem starts with the 1971 war between India and Pakistan which resulted in the formation of the state of Bangladesh. This war also saw massive influx into India from Bangladesh and particularly into the state of Assam. The people of Assam, particularly the indigenous people and the tribes, got very agitated about this and they complained that their lands were being taken and their resources depleted. The government of India was then forced to deal with this and in 1985 reached an Assam Accord and what the Assam Accord basically did was to bring forward the cut-off date for entry into India which was 1950 in the constitution and this was brought forward to 1971 but the Assam Accord was never implemented. Then the Supreme Court waded into the issue and delivered judgment saying basically that the accord was not implemented but while delivering judgment it used language which was very hostile to Muslims, shockingly hostile. It basically said that the influx of refugees into India was akin to enemy invasion and it speculated again and again in the judgment in very clear terms that there was a distinct possibility that the Muslim invaders would perhaps at some stage of time, ask for a break away of part of Assam and its merger with the state of Bangladesh. So the Supreme Court directed that a register of citizenship should be established in India to keep track and to enumerate the persons coming into India. And the National Register of Citizens started to be implemented. The NRC goes merrily along, the enumeration continues and when it comes ultimately to the final count, we find that it was not 5 million, 10 million persons coming into India as reported regularly in the papers, a figure used for political campaigns against the minority section, but it was a figure of 1.9 million. In order to politically deal with the situation, the government enacted the Citizenship Amendment Act. And the act was to regularize the migrants who had come in. But the twist in the statute was that the majority community would be regularized on very lenient terms, but the Muslims were excluded. And discrimination of this sort on the basis of religion is specifically prohibited in the Indian constitution. But in the meanwhile, the people of India, students, people of all communities, ordinary people, began a massive agitation against the statue. The repercussions for Muslims in Assam and for the rest of the country were awful. In Assam, for example, people who had been there for decades, who had children, who had shops, who had employment, who were members of the police force, sometimes high officers in government, were suddenly told that their names were not in the register of citizens, that they were illegal migrants. And so what India effectively did was to convert 500,000 Muslims in India who up till then were presumed to be citizens of India into stateless persons. The UN conventions on statelessness specifically prohibits any state from creating statelessness within its boundaries. 
and India created possibly the largest body of stateless persons in modern time. हम लोग यहाँ के शहरी हैं हिंदुस्तान के और वो हमसे बोल रहे हैं कि आप प्रूफ दिखाओ कि आप यहाँ के शहरी हो या नहीं हो आई एम अ पोएट आई रोट अ पोम जिसका उनवान था कि आएगा इनकलाब पहन के बिंदी चूड़ियाँ बुरका हिजाब तो ये इस पोम के थ्रू हमने बताने की कोशिश की है कि जो औरतें आई हैं वो हर स्फेयर से आई हैं जो कि हिजाब भी पहनती हैं जो बुरखा भी पहनती हैं जो बिंदी भी पहनती हैं जो चूड़ियाँ भी पहनती हैं कमज़ोरी की निशानी बताते हैं चूड़ियों को तो इसीलिए मतलब यू नो चूड़ियाँ पहनने वाली औरतें घर की औरतें घर में जो बैक जो आज तक के सबको लगता था कि दे विल नॉट स्टैंड अप फॉर देयर राइट्स वो आई इस फेयर में The thing about these protests were they were not just mere protests against the government. It was not just that we were targeting government, putting our points ahead. It was also how dedicated people were. They were putting their points in the most artistic manner that independent India had ever seen. Itna artistically with the use of poetry, art. There was graffiti. There was uh, wonderful speeches. All of it combined could tell you the soul of this. The repercussions for people outside Assam was that governments everywhere began to ask for documentation, particularly from Muslims, to establish that they were here in India prior to 1950. And you can imagine the situation that created for people to try and get records that go back 70 years. And if you're poor, laborer, a worker in the fields. You would hardly have these records. CAA is now being challenged in the Supreme Court, and I am really confident that the government of India will be hard pressed to explain how discrimination on the basis of religion is permissible, because the Constitution prohibits it. <laughs>